my name is Cherry. I am a portrait photographer. Just two nights ago, I did a video about my new camera, Canon 5D Mark IV. And someone else asked me why I didn't change into Sony's mirrorless system, which is a great question because I think Sony's mirrorless is very handsome. It's very sexy. It is true. So I want to say it at first, I'm not paid by any one of them. And I like both of them. I actually own both of uh, the cameras, but I own slightly different kind of cameras from these two, two companies, and I'll explain why. I started shooting photography a long time ago. I started with film photography, and actually I shot with slides as well, so I'm pretty old school. I even developed my color pictures, not black and white, color photos. I self-developed them. Um, well, not the film. The film you need to get it to a store, but I developed them on on a picture. So we'll talk about that why I didn't change it. For one, I think um, using a system is like getting into a marriage with someone. Ta-da! It is to get to know the character of your host system. It's not just the camera, but the lens as well. You need to get to understand them. They are not just basically, you know, it's not just aperture. It's not just shutter speed. It is that as well, but you need to really get to know the character. It's like you're melting into each other. You want your system to melt into your creativity. So when you hold your camera, you're not spending time in thinking, Ooh, what do I need to change? What do I need to play with? You know exactly how to shoot it. It's like making love to your camera. You know what button to press. Oh, Wow, that's bad. Uh, you know exactly which button to press and I think it's important because when I think about shooting photography is you want to spend as little time as possible to work the equipment and spend all your mental energy, all the RAM in your brain, all the memories to work into the creativity because when you shoot, when you're so into the images that you're shooting, you don't have any more energy to work with this thing. So another thing is, um, not only it is a marriage to your equipment, it is exactly like a marriage because if you divorce with your system, you will lose half of your asset. You can sell your equipment. If they're really good, you know, if you have L-series lens, all the things from Canon, they worth some money, but not a lot. You will get, you know, a 50% off, you know, you will lose at least 30%, at least. That's like you bought it yesterday and you're trying to sell it today. Especially in Hong Kong, you will lose 30% of its value. And you may lose more depending on which lens you have, how long have you owned it, the condition of the lens. So that is something that you need to think about. Are you ready to, for a very sexy new young partner, change your system? Uh, I think both of them take amazing pictures. I don't, because I don't use um, the Sony a7R 2 so I can't really tell you what I think about the image. But what I can tell you is, when I look at amazing photographers' work, I've never looked at a picture and said, hmm, that has to be taken by a Sony camera. Or I look at another one, that picture has to be taken by Canon. I've never been able to do that. Maybe you can, but I can't. I can only tell if that's a good picture or a bad picture. And actually, what I mostly can tell is who took the picture. I can tell Annie Libovitz's picture away from Mario Testino's pictures. They are very different. And oh, I can't say her last name. Hopefully I said it right. Uh, Ellen Von Unwurz. Her pictures are very different. I think they spend all their energy on creativity instead of what camera they're holding. So that is one reason I'm saying that because I know Canon system well, and that's why I'm not changing into Sony. I don't want to spend time to learn it. I am a working photographer. So that means I'm always shooting. If I, will, I were to sell all my equipments at this point, and then I'll use that money, use half of what I already have, use that kind of money to spend more on something that I've never used before, that's, there is a learning curve there and I don't have time for that learning curve. Unless you have a lot of money. There are a lot of photographers, they own different kind of systems, they get to know different kind of system. It's never an interest of mine. I never really care too much about the specs. To me, it's, is it a good lens or a bad lens? Is it a good camera or a bad camera? Mine is very, it's not black and white, but I think all these big brands make amazing cameras anyway, so you couldn't get it wrong. I mean, if Samsung is 
making DSLR, then maybe you should not think about that. But you know, all the big brands, when people ask me Canon or Nikon, I'm like, just buy one. Don't argue which brand it is. However, there's another thing about um, choosing a camera. Find one that is sexy to you. I have made a mistake before of buying Nikon's camera because my dad owned Nikon system. So I thought, well, I can use his, his lenses, but I hated the camera when I first bought it. And I still hated it at the end of it because it's so big. I have tiny little hands and it looks so bulky and it looks so ugly. I did not want to take it out to shit. So that is actually an advice my friend Kevin Tom told me. And I think it's, it's very, I mean, it sounds like a superficial advice, but I think it's actually a very practical one. So let's see. Um, we talk about the relationship with the camera. The other one is the viewfinder. So with traditional DSLR, with the name Digital Single Lens Reflex Camera, what does that mean? So there is a, mechan a mechanism in there. You know, when you were a kid, you, you did that uh, pirate lens where you hold it and you can see it like this. This is exactly what it is. Image. The, so whatever we see, um, it reflect lights of the environment so there's no lights you can't see things because they're not reflecting any lights so when we look through here we are seeing the the light reflection for all the objects around us just like how we will see like with or without it it looks exactly the same i mean with or without the camera but with electronic viewfinder like the mirrorless of sony's it's different because what you're seeing here is a pixelated screen which is exactly like a the lcd mon but um in a much smaller area like here but it blocks out other lights i mean in in this kind of mechanism then you can see it right there it's a lot more concentrated than looking at here however let's think about that lcd is not reflecting light lcd is emitting lights just like your tv is showing lights it is already a translation of what you're seeing what the lens is seeing i think it changed our creativity i talk about creativity a lot because it is a brain that matters, it's not the equipment that matters. Um, I don't want to look at an image that is already been that has already been translated from or by a piece of equipment. I want to see exactly how I would look into the environment. That's my creativity, uh, my creative process, and I think it is important. You need to think about that. And age is a question. I talked to a friend who owns a lot of cameras and he loved his sony's mirrorless but one thing he mentioned is that because he has long sight um with long sight when you age light you become more sensitive to lights as i said before well how come how come when we look at the world around us our eyes don't get tired because they reflect light when you look into the even with lcd monitor your eyes get tired because they emit lights, they show lights. And when your eyes are so sensitive to light as you age, it makes it even more tiring to look into an electronic viewfinder. So that is also something that you might want to think about. Uh, the last point now the last point is i think very important as well you need to ask yourself do you have the money if you have a lot of money you want to change to a sexy camera i do think sony's camera is sexier but you need to think about the purpose of it uh and it will not make a huge difference again which camera you're using but the purpose makes a difference for example you are just a recreational user sounds like it's drug but if you use it for fun choose whichever if you think sony is sexier go for sony but if you are buying it thinking that you want to work as a professional photographer you might want to consider dslr because this baby looks a lot more professional um, than sony's because a lot of toy cameras look kind of like that it is a sexy camera i'm not saying that it is not so that is something you want to think about and especially for a tiny little girl like me can you imagine me with a mirrorless in an event no one would take me seriously it is a really realistic thing um 
Of course, my work will prove the fact that I'm a professional or not. But when I'm on site, no one can see my work. So they're going to judge me based on my look, the way I dress, and the camera that I use. So that is something that you might want to think about. Um, now, the last thing when people ask me about weight, this is something that I have a lot to say because I own different kind of cameras before. I have point and shoot digital. I have semi-professional. Wow, holy smoke. I own a lot of camera all through the past 10 years, 10, 15 years. Ooh, wow. So I, I have an entry-level DSLR. I have 5D full frame and I use a 1DX Mark II. So I use all range of cameras before. If weight is a reason or one important point for you, then don't go with either system. Sony's mirrorless is not that much lighter. Because remember, if you want to use good lens, I think what you need to think about are the lenses. Because, I mean, the camera is important, but the lens, they are the most important part. Well, okay, people might kill me for saying that, but I think it's very important. And the Sony great lenses are not that light. You might have a lighter body, but you will have a very big lens if you want great quality. So the weight doesn't really pay, play into being a super advantage at the end of the day because it is still a heavy camera. Like me, I when, when I go travel, I bring both, I have two cameras. The Sony one that I'm using to shoot is a very small camera. Uh, it's the RX103, I think that's how it's called, I'm pretty sure. So I got it around roughly two years ago. I love it, it's light. I can put it in my purse, like a tiny little purse. Uh, it is still a heavy camera because it's pretty compact. It takes amazing pictures, it takes amazing video. And sometimes, you know, that's, I don't need a cam, I don't, it's impossible to get one camera that fulfills every needs of yours. If weight is a reason, get the small compact one, and that's what I did. I have this small compact one that I can just pull out. It's less than, it's less than, I don't know, I think it's less than one or two pounds. It's light, it's, it's the weight of my wallet. But if you want to go for professional, I think DSLR is still something to think about. However, if you have loads and loads of money, feel free to get the Sony uh, f mm, uh, full frame, yes, full frame mirrorless. I think it is a very sexy set of camera and you won't go wrong with it. I have heard a lot of great things about it and I think it's a pretty fabulous system. So I didn't change it mostly is that I want to focus my energy on creativity and since I already know and own a lot of items from Canon and ooh, there's one more thing to me it is very important um, your system sometimes may fail you and Canon in Hong Kong has amazing customer service I am a Canon professional um, I have their membership so if anything goes wrong with my system which actually never happened I can just easily borrow their lenses. That is important and it's very easy to find their customer service. Now, both Sony and Canon in Hong Kong have amazing customer service. The repairment is fast. They can fix a piece of equipment within a week most of the time, even just a couple of days. They're really responsive, extremely reliable, I have never had any problem with either one of the companies when I need to have my equipment fixed. So I hope this video helped you a little bit too. I don't want to tell you the conclusion because it is still yours, So, but I, ha I hope that it gives you a little bit of insights of which if you are considering of changing your system or not. I hope this helped. Have a great day. I will talk a little bit about how to choose a camera next time if you do not already own a system. That's all for today. My name is Cherry. Check out my website at cherrywongphoto.com. C-H-E-R-R-Y-W-O-N-G-P-H-O-T-O.com. Bye.